it's not something that is common in Oakland, California, you know, of all places to have somebody who's specializing in pastrami and doing it this way. We are kind of in a weird tucked away area that you have to find. You have to know what you're looking for. If you hear a train going by anytime, you know you're there. You know, people learn about us through word of mouth. My name's Cash. I'm the chef owner of Pyro's Pastrami in Jack London Square. Hi, my name is Anahita and I'm the co-owner of Pyro's Pastrami. Pastrami is cured meat. I mean, if I were just to make it plain and simple. We use beef brisket and we have a brine for about 21 to 26 days. And then we smoke and steam. That's how we make our pastrami. I feel like the pastrami culture in the Bay Area is either non-existent to some people or very existent to some people. People are really nostalgic about their pastrami and how they like to consume it and what they think of it as. And then others are kind of new to the pastrami world, maybe aren't from the East Coast or any place that has a prominent pastrami or deli scene. Pyro's works out of a commissary. The commissary is Port Kitchen's Marketplace on the corner of Broadway and Embarcadero in Jacqueline Square in Oakland, California. We have a really unique setup. We've tried to configure like maybe packaging our food and like popping up in different locations, but we just can't do that because of the amount of volume that we're doing and the fact that we're doing it as a live order, like a real restaurant. So we have to kind of have our customers come to our commissary and say hi to us. All of the things that we do from scratch are our breads, which is our French bread and our rye. All of our sauces, our mustard, our Thousand Island, our curry ketchup, our horseradish cream, our brine, our rub, our pickling spice, our pickles and sauerkraut, our chips, our fries, our vegan pastrami, which cannot be forgotten about. I think that's it. I think we covered that's it. That's the whole menu. <laughs> <laughs> Why do it from scratch? because I cannot buy something pre-made like that if I know how to make it, because I know I can make it better. Right now I'm gonna show you how we brine Pyro's pastrami. First thing we do is when we receive the meat, we're gonna break it down, just trim some of the gristle off, some of the pieces that we're not gonna use, but Pyro's is known for having a thicker fat cap on it. We're partners with Cream Co. Meat Company right here in Oakland, and they source from Creekstone Farms, and that was really important for us to source a farm that had sustainability in mind, that used humane practices, that the quality of the meat was very, very high. So this is USDA certified, 100% Black Angus beef. So this process is day one out of about 30 days is what it's gonna take. So we're gonna process them now, brine them today. They're gonna brine for a little over 21 days. At that point, we go into a different process of desalination, uh, air drying and that before we smoke. So this is the most important step, in my opinion. I'm more of the talker, as you can see. <laughs> you know, just being the chef and always having to be like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Anahita is like very good at being a team player. I feel incredibly honored just to know Cash and to be able to work with him on such a close level. You know, I'm just really lucky. And he's taught me a lot about the kitchen and about life in general. So we're blooming all of the pickling spice. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what's in it. So right now we're just toasting them up just a little bit so that they're more aromatic. So this is what I call making the tea. I'm getting everything kind of incorporated. You can see that the liquid has changed color and it's looking more like a tea, it's smelling like a tea even. Let that chill. Now I'm gonna get the sea salt in. Looks really nice. I love the contrast. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we have two 44 gallon barrels. These have been in here about a week. So what I'll do is next week, I'll take them all out and the ones that are on the bottom will be on the top. I'll mix up the solution really, really well to get an even cure. I ended up becoming a chef and it was a very weird way. I was 19 years old. My mother had passed away when I was 18 years old. Um, I have two younger siblings that I was helping. We didn't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of money at that time and I needed to get a job. 
the only place that would really hire me was this <laughs> Jewish uh, catering kitchen. They gave me a job and I started as a dishwasher. And I was very intrigued uh, by the culture. They were different. I mean, I grew up in, a, in an American, Mexican-American household, you know, completely different from Israeli Jewish community kitchen. It was like night and day. I was basically, you know, raised up in, in the Jewish catering kitchen. That was my first real kitchen job. So I went into the industry just guns blaring, working 18 hour days and then partying uh, until 9 a.m. and then going to work by 11 a.m. I remember going to the doctor and my doctor, you know, talking to me and I'm like, I need to get back to work. You know, I can't be here all day. And he said, you know what, if you keep going this way, with your, your blood pressure is gonna go up, you know, you, you're having a, a lot of anxiety and depression, you're not sleeping well, you're drinking too much, you're eating the wrong foods, you know, and that really took like a humongous toll on my body for a long freaking time and I'm still recovering from that. And where I'm at today is like, I have an amazing life. I get to do what I love to do. I'm focused on my health. You know, I'm excited to get up every single day and, and do this. Right now we're at our smoking facility. It's not too far from, from where we do our pop-ups. We're gonna be smoking this about 150 pounds in that box smoker there. We're gonna take these out, hit them with some uh, classic yellow mustard, and then get the rub on them and put those in there. We use cherry, 100%. We like it, it's a little sweet. I feel like for what we're doing with, with our pickling spice and our rub, it really complements the flavor of the pastrami. And once you smell it after it's come out, you'll kind of smell that it is kind of like sweet and spicy. The rub is a secret. That's our proprietary blend of spices. We've tried all kinds of different things. We wanted to do something different, but we also wanted to keep it classic. All right. They can be anywhere from like six to eight hours of smoke and then we'll wrap them up, let them kind of just rest a little bit. We'll take them back to our other facility and then we'll chill them really well. So they'll spend the next few days like chilling um, and then we'll steam and yeah, it is a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's worth it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tasty. This is gonna be a tasty batch. Our slogan is feeding the revolution and I really feel like we are the revolution. And we didn't just like want to make pastrami, like that wasn't our number one goal, but it was also to be really involved with the community yeah. and people around us at the time. People just need support and they need to know that there's somebody in their corner. I know what it feels like to, f to feel like you don't have anybody in your corner and you're alone and you're, you know, you're worried about what people might think or what they might do. But if we don't stand up and fight for each other, then, I mean, what are we doing? Well, we're filming a commercial today. We have the beautiful Andrea, and Anahita and I are gonna be whipping up some sandwiches for her to eat and to kind of take some photographs of those. Some really nice, beautiful ones with, you know, large, big, fat stuffed meat in the buns there. We wanna work with Andrea, number one, first and foremost. We met her uh, through a pop-up that we did for Hanukkah, and we got to talking, and I really thought that she was fucking awesome. And I saw that, you know, she was just this very empowering, strong, independent woman, and there's nothing better than a strong, independent woman eating a pastrami sandwich on camera in a very sexy, fun way. So, you know, because when we say we're all inclusive, we're all inclusive. We're not, well, we're all inclusive, but nobody in the sex industry or, you know, nobody in the black community, even though restaurants don't outright say it, when do you see them actually doing anything that is convincing anybody that they're really being a part of the movement? And that's what we're doing. We were pleasantly surprised because we had no idea how many like pastrami connoisseurs were literally in Oakland and Berkeley, you know, in the East Bay. So opening this up, I thought, you know, yeah, this is gonna be a good, a good place to, you know, pop up. But then we just got bombarded with like people who are like, oh my God, I've been, 
I've lived here for seven years. I haven't had great pastrami. I'm so stoked for you guys to pop up. I can't wait to try it. It really is my white whale. <laughs> you know, it's, it's super complex and it's, it's always changing. I'm nowhere near ever being finished with my testing and making things better. I'm always gonna be striving to make things better because we want our customers to be able to tell us exactly how they feel. If they're not comfortable with something, if they do feel like the wait was too long, if they feel like, you know, it's not worth what they're paying, like we wanna know, we wanna, we wanna be able to make things right and they always feel like there's a, uh, a way for them to communicate. I am in charge of what I make. I can make whatever I want. And now I wanna make everything. I wanna make everything from scratch and I wanna make it the best. And that's just how it's gonna be. We're never gonna not do that because then we wouldn't be pyros. This is our foundation right now. We're built on quality, handcrafted everything. Get here early, that's all I can say.